Welcome to the probability multiplication rule. Before we dealt with our or questions, right, the probability of uh, A or B, now we're dealing with the probability of A and B. I know I mentioned before that that can sometimes mean the probability of one thing happening that has two characteristics. Pick a card, what's the probability that it's a red card and a face card? That's a really odd um, you know, specialized question because you could really just say what's the probability that it's a red face card, right? Uh, usually when you see A and B it means two things are happening. You're picking two cards, you're rolling two dice, you're picking a card and rolling a dice, you're spinning a wheel twice, you're flipping a coin twice. You're doing two things, right? You have two different events and you want to know what's the probability that something happens on the first event, your A, and something specific happens on the second event, your B. So that's going to be what we're, we're going to be dealing with when we're trying to figure out how to use the multiplication rule. So here's what it means, right? That means that event A happens first in the first thing, and then event B happens in the second thing. This uh, B line A, this thing here, this is pronounced the probability that B, the probability of B given A. So it's the probability that B happens given that A has already happened. And that really only matters when um, our two events are dependent. So here's the formal rule. Again, it's another one of those um, formulas that you really only need to learn and memorize if you're going to be a statistician or a mathematician and learn these things for real. As far as we're concerned, we just need to know the basics of probability to kind of build the building blocks for statistics. We don't need to bother with this stuff. Let's just keep using the dash technique. Because all this is saying is f now figure out the probability that B happens given that A already happened. So let's look at a simple example of uh, picking two cards from a deck. What's the probability that the first card is a heart and the second card is a diamond? Okay, so that's my A and my B. Well, just give yourself two dashes. Don't worry about this silly formula. Just two dashes. Good over total. If the first card has to be a heart, how many good cards are there? Well, there's 13 hearts out of 52 total. If the second card has to be a diamond, how many good ones are there? Well, there's also 13 diamonds. But now, how many total are there? There's only 51 because we already chose a card. There's one less total cards. If you multiply those two together, that's going to be the probability of getting a heart and then a diamond. And this idea of 13 over 52, sorry, 13 over 51, that is your probability of getting a diamond given that a heart was already drawn. All right, that's your probability of B given A. If we want to do just the probability of a diamond, i.e. just a probability of B, that would be 13 over 52, right? Because nothing else has happened, so there's 52 total. So that's how those things are slightly different depending on the situation of the question. Uh, let's look at another one. Let's do a uh, probability of a heart and another heart, right? Two hearts in a row. Well, 13 out of 52. And then, sorry, times. Um, how many hearts do we have left for our second card? We only have 12 out of 51. Let's expand it. Let's do the probability of three red cards. So now we have three dashes. Well, how many red cards are there? There's 26 out of 52. And by the way, if you're not very familiar with a deck of cards, go buy one and crack it open and take a look, because there's a lot of questions that involve decks of cards. OK, so now we have a red card in our hand. The next card also has to be red, so how many are left? Only 25 out of 51. And the next one also has to be red, so there's only 24 out of 50 and that would be the probability of that happening. It's really just that simple if you use the dash technique. It's much better than having to worry about all these silly formulas. And that's what this says, right? Instead of looking at formulas, just be intuitive about it. Figure out the probability that the first thing happens, your A part, right? And then when you're figuring out the probability of the B part, your next dash, you're just um, changing those numbers to take into account that A has already happened. 
So you're changing the the number of the total and sometimes also the number of the good depending on the question. Right here we didn't change the number of the good because we weren't looking for another heart, we were looking for a diamond, but it still changed our total. That's what it means to be intuitive. Here are some more examples. We can burn through these hopefully kind of quickly. Right? If they're both red, it's going to be the same thing as if pretty much they're both hearts, only slightly different numbers. 26 out of 52 for the first red, and then 25 out of 51 for the second one. Okay, red then black. 26 out of 52, and then 26 out of 51. Okay, the first one's got to be a 7. Well, there's only four 7s out of 52, and the next one's got to be an 8. There's also four 8s, again, out of 51. Red and 7. That would seem like a simple question, but it's actually kind of difficult because think about it, some of the red cards are sevens. So you really now have to think about cases. Case one, where it's um, a red seven, and then the second card is a seven. And case two, it's going to be a red where it's not a 7, right, 7 complement, and then the second card is a 7. So let's set up our, uh, our dashes. Okay, the first card has to be a red 7. How many red 7s are there? There's only two of them out of 52 cards. Now the next card has to be a 7, but the first one was a 7. Remember, it was one of the red 7s. So instead of having four left, we only have three sevens left to choose from. One of them could be red, right? It didn't say anything about it. it had to be exactly one red. The second one could also be red. If we wanted to specifically say it had to be a, a red card and a non-red seven, then this number would just be two. There'd be two left, right? So this is um, out of 51. And then when we go over here, how many non-reds are there? There's two of them out of 52, right? Sorry, um, how many non seven red cards are there? Right, not non, uh, not non red sevens, but how many red cards that aren't sevens? Well, there's 26 red cards. Two of them are sevens, so this is actually 24 over 52. All right, so let's say that again. We're looking. For, we still have to have a red card, but it just can't be a seven. Right. In the first case, it was a red card and it was a seven. There's only two red sevens. In the second case, it's a red card that can't be a seven. So there's 24 of those. Right. 26 minus the two sevens, and then the second dash. It has to be a seven, and since we took the two sevens out of here, right? We're not counting the sevens here, then they can actually happen here, and there are four possible sevens out of 51. If we add these two cases together, that should be the probability of getting a red card and a seven. I say should be, because when they get tricky like this, I'm not even sure off the top of my head. I'd have to really think about this and be, uh, be positive. Um, a red and a face card is going to be just as tricky as a red and a seven. Right, so I'll leave that for you guys to try on your own and see if you can get the right numbers. Here's another example that points out how uh, details definitely matter. So the first question asks for the probability that two people are born on the same day of the week, while the second one says the probability that two people are both born on Monday. If they have to be born on the same day of the week, right, the first person can be born on any day and then the second person just has to be born on that same day. So here's our two dashes. How many choices you know, as far as days of the week does the first person have? They have seven out of seven. Now that they've made their choice, the first person let's say is born on a Tuesday, then this person only has one out of seven choices to match up and then we end up getting a one-seventh probability that they're both born on the same day of the week. However, this question says they both have to be born on a Monday. So here's my two dashes, and since they both have to be on Monday, the first person only has one good choice out of seven, the second person also has one out of seven, and now we have one out of 49. Hugely different with just a slight difference in the wording. 
Now the multiplication rule just says that if we're doing more than two things, so th you know now we're trying to see if three people are born on the same day, or we're now picking four cards out of a deck, whatever it happens to be, you just put down that many dashes and you just keep multiplying. A tree diagram is a pictorial way of representing all of those choices. It's a great way to visualize things, but it's a real pain in the butt when you start having a lot of choices because your tree gets really, really big. Here's a simple example, and you can already see how big the tree is getting. This is a quiz that had a true-false question followed by a five-question, uh, you know, five-choice, multiple choice, A, B, C, D, and E. And this tree diagram lists all the possible ways that you could answer those two questions. You could pick true and then A, or true and then B, etc., 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 false and then A, false and then B, etc., etc., et and there's all ten of them. Uh, mathematically, hopefully you can see that you get two choices for true, false, five choices for um, your multiple choice, so just like the dashes, right, two times five, there's ten, there's your total number of choices. Now if we want to say if someone guessed randomly, what's the probability they get it right? Well, how many right answers are there for the true false? There's one out of how many total? Two. If they have to guess the multiple choice correct, there's also only one choice out of five, and the answer is they have a one out of ten chance of guessing correctly. So in summary, whenever we see the word or for our probability of A or B, that suggests addition, right? We're going to add things up. We find the probability of A, the probability of B, and we're very careful to make sure that we don't count anything twice, and we can just add those two together. Or we can just add up the good and put them over the total when we're doing the dash technique. When we see and, that's multiplication, i.e. probability of A and B, we get our multiple dashes and we multiply our dashes. That's the multiplication technique for probability.